uh, is, uh, it, this is not as easy to do in denser neighborhoods. I try to eliminate rogue devices broadcasting any kind of signal. Anything can interrupt the signal. Anything. If it's, especially the wireless stuff. That stuff, that's very difficult to manage when you're in an environment that is just, it's, it's flooded, right? With, with all sorts of access point signals bouncing. Those are the ones that you can see, right? I mean, I'm sure if you had a, a tracking mechanism, you could see anything and everything, not just you know, the wireless networks that, that are bouncing about, your, you know, where you happen to be. If it's Bluetooth and it doesn't need to be on, it's off. If it's something that might have a wireless signal, I don't need it, I want to turn it off. So I do my best to el eliminate those things. I'm not going to stop using a microwave. I'm not going to start using uh, stop using things on the, the, this, these spectrums because that's just, especially when it tilts into impractical. But I think very, very much about how to maximize, specifically, this is probably more on the wireless side of the thing, or I guess on the spectrum, if I can use that phrase, this is more of a relevant tip because you've got a lot of signals bouncing around and any kind of interference can cause issues. Uh, this is going to get mitigated, I believe, over time with, you know, better access points or better, you know, uh, revisions to, to the Wi-Fi standards. I, I do my best to eliminate any kind of rogue devices to, uh, to minimize uh, interference. Another thing that I do to boost internet speeds is I have a router or specifically an access point uh, that auto optimizes and this is something that when toxic and i recently did the video about uh, you know the one trick that saved my home network speeds or whatever we we happen to title it and i'm still so grateful for that 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 tip what tip chris you can watch that video it's already published in the channel that would be a half hour video we're not going to do that right now the wireless access point that i have auto optimizes the channel so as i said i'm kind of in a dense area where a signal over here is broadcasting on channel six well if i was already on channel six suddenly i got interference well, my access point is is constantly polling and say, oh, it's on six. I'm switching over to what, 11, or I'm switching over to this, this channel, that channel. So it's always optimizing and I don't have to worry about it. There's some access points or routers if they're an all in one type of device. Uh, and I'm sorry if I keep tapping the mic there. I, I, I'm Italian, so I keep knocking into things even if I don't mean to. The wireless channel, having it auto-optimize, has saved me headaches to the point where I don't even realize how many headaches it's saved. If you don't have a piece of hardware, or hardware, specifically an access point, or the thing that's broadcasting your wireless signal, that's auto-optimizing the channel on a regular enough basis, you're potentially running into issues where you don't even realize you're running into them. And re-optimizing and having to do that manually is just too tedious. And I think it's too tedious for most people because most people don't even think about it. They don't even think about it. But that to me keeps me at top speed. Bumper to bumper maximizing the throughput, minimizing the packet loss, and having all those optimizations happen automatically, it's turnkey. And so if you don't have something like that on your network appliance, specifically the access point, uh, you may want to be upgrading your equipment. And I'd imagine many of the people that are watching this video probably already have something that it automatically selects. But if you're not having something ma uh, automatically do it, the thing you got to keep in mind is you need to be paying far more attention than you are. Because if you're always set at a certain channel, your neighbor may not be. Or a new neighbor may move in. Or another access ma point may come in. So that's something that, that I feel has, has boosted my internet speed in magnitudes because I just don't have to think about it. Auto-optimization. Another thing that I did, and this was not exactly intuitive to me, but in doing some research, uh, the with my particular access points, you can set the uh, uh, the transmitter power. So you can choose like low, medium, high, or auto. Now most people you'd think in in, in, in toxic we might you know dive into this you know separately, but or you know a after I'm through, or if you want to you know interrupt here at this point, that's fine as well because you know I'm, I'm getting a little lightheaded. I'm talking so much. Uh, but you would think oh a high transmit power is better. That means it gets more signal. But it turns out no, that's not necessarily the case. And so what you know I I tried messing manually. I'm like do I go low, medium, high, and, and the way my topology and how the network Work works and the device is connected and ultimately I went with auto and that has given me top internet speeds across the board every time I do a test now low ping times like 12 15 milliseconds at the router level uh you know in the bandwidth is just a hundred in many ways 110 percent more than the, the the speeds that I'm paying for uh but the the big factor for me was being able to set that transmitter power manually to auto rather than having it set at a certain level that was just pre-configured and, 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 and locked so I'm curious I'll break myself toxic you know am I right high is not necessarily the most intuitive setting for a transmitter transmitter power for wireless? Yeah, I mean, that's that's correct. You can introduce more radio noise if you're just constantly blaring out the loudest signal. If you've got devices close to your access point or you've got a small apartment or something like that, you don't need to be broadcasting your signal to you know one or two houses over. You just need your signal where you need it. 
So it, yeah, we can get into that in a, into another time, or maybe see Nuke will touch in on that. But uh, yeah, you're you've got the gist down for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was I was curious to know, uh, you know, specifically what issue it inter or it, it introduced, and you, you pointed out the uh, the radio signal. Oh, Is that something it. that you can do in most consumer routers or access points? That would be an access point thing, and I guess that would be contingent on the firmware. Yeah, I don't know. Access, access points, it depends on the vendor. Usually your all-in-one router box, that I'll call it. They typically don't have a setting where you can just let it auto-adjust. Some do, some don't, but general rule is no. Okay. See, I, that's, again, I come back to the equipment. It's, it's like, hey, if I'm paying for these gigabit speeds, I want to get as much as I possibly can. And right. it's, it, this, to me, is the biggest bottleneck. Your, your network appliance that th or appliances that are bringing that connection into your home are critical. You can't spend $5,000 on a PC and then cheap out with a $100 router. Like, you, like I'm sure some people, well, all you got to do is, I'm like, no, 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 dude. Hey, if you want to be a network admin at home, knock yourself out. And I've learned enough to be dangerous, certainly. But having all these features, Features, these very power they're not even power user features they're features that make sense for for prosumers and specifically the people that are like pc people who game people who you know you love technology they're, they're they they really need to think twice you need to think twice about that network equipment that you have because it could very well be the bottleneck that would allow you to better optimize the speed that you're paying for and the throughput right. that you may not be getting because it yeah. just can't handle it. The device itself can't. It doesn't have enough CPU power. It doesn't have enough memory to be able to handle the bandwidth that, that you're paying for or the, the amount of packets or, or traffic that you're passing through it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I heard you, Glendon. Um, no, I was just going to say that, yeah, I, I really want to dive deeper into that with my with my network with, with you, Brad, at some yep. point. I, like I it's said, worth it. it's because worth it. I, I have the equipment, you know, or the, the, the high end PC and I have a, a decently stable, high connection speed. You know, it's, it, I can do a, a speed test and have, you know, I, I pay for a gig of course I'm capped at 40 up mm. because it's on cable. But a lot of times I'll hit, you know, over that one gig, you know, 1.1, 1.2, but I want to make sure that I'm utilizing that to its fullest capacity and and right now i don't think that i am yeah yeah we can definitely take a look at it it's a process of elimination yeah and to touch on it for the viewers as well if you want to know if you're in a wi-fi congested area there's tons of apps that you can download on your smartphone and it puts your uh wi-fi chip into what they call promiscuous mode and basically what that just means is that it just is able to accept any current broadcast and it'll feed that information to you it's not actively connecting to it but on the app it'll tell you what channel it is and it'll have like uh, the usage or what access points are using those channels graphically so that you can pinpoint yours out and say well you know it's congested down here that's where mine's at i'm going to change my channel to something that's higher that's not you. but see so. this is where i come back to let your network appliance, specifically your access point, do it for you. Let it yeah. auto-optimize. And I, I think it can be done nightly, hourly, whatever the, the whatever the configuration interval. happens. The, yeah, the interval, thank you. Uh, automatic is just saves so much, so much stress. So much. I just don't think about it. Yeah, if you have the ability to do auto, definitely set that. I, I would look for that in your next uh, access point for sure. Uh, the next uh, thing that I do to boost my internet speeds is I try to find the best middle ground for wireless channel width. So this is different from uh, the, uh, the, uh, the wireless channel as in... Um, like which channel, like 1, 11, if you're on what, uh, 2.4, the classic Wi-Fi 4, or, you know, the other spectrum, 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz. There's also channel width, and Brad could probably better explain it, but effectively, like for, for Wi-Fi 4, the classic 802.11b, right, you've got 20 hertz and 40 hertz. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Okay. Yep. And you could toggle between the two. With 5 gigahertz, you've got different intervals. Off the top of my head, like 20, 40, 80. It's something like once, like it goes up, like far from an expert, I'm just telling you, this is what I've done to optimize or boost my internet speeds. And so I've tried different channel widths and recognized that it's kind of like a, a seesaw, right? If you, if you tilt this direction, you know, things might get, you know, the throughput might be better, but you're, you have to be closer to the access point. If you go this direction, there's, you know, you can have, you can be at a further range from the access point, but the throughput may not be as strong. So ultimately trying to find that balance with uh, the, the middle ground, if you will, with channel width is a matter of troubleshooting. What, you know, if you're at a, an extreme point in your house, things are not happening, right? Well, then you may need to move your channel width, you know, the, the, the lower direction, right? You know, your drop 
your hertz a bit versus hey man i'm get i'm get i want great throughput and i'm not that far from the access points with most of the devices well then up your channel with through the roof as long as your devices can handle it so that's something that um i have found again a uh, prosumer level access point should allow you to configure this as well Ch setting your channel with that can boost your internet speeds it, it, it can boost your it can improve your throughput which vicariously yeah. can improve your internet speeds and that's something that i've not even thought about is this channel with you know like us if anything that we're discussing tonight it, it networking for a consumer level is, is probably where i'm lacking the most um, and I'm probably the most ignorant on. So yeah, no, this is all great. And, and Brad, did I explain that the channel with well enough, this like the seesaw and the, and the hertz and going higher distance, et cetera? Yeah, you did. I, I'm a visual learner. So maybe somebody that's also visual, they might not know what you're talking about specifically by the like, channel. For me, the way I can visualize it and explain it best to people is that if you draw a line, you have what they call the, the sine wave, which goes up and down. So you split that S curve up and down halfway through. The curve at how fast that goes up and down, that's the hertz, right? So the faster, the 40 megahertz or gigahertz, when that's compressed, it's going really, really fast. That frequency has trouble going through walls, obstacles, that kind of thing. It's really good at line of sight communication, but once you start introducing windows and you know, screens in your windows, that kind of thing, wiring, walls, whatever it may be, it has trouble penetrating that. When you go to the 20, I think it's gigahertz, or is it megahertz? Yeah, five, the five gigahertz versus 2.4 gigahertz, but that's specifically your spectrum, right? Yeah. Wi-Fi, yeah. you know, 2.4 versus, you know, um, the five gigahertz spectrum. It's 20 megahertz versus 40 megahertz. Then for five gigahertz, it's 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz, 160 megahertz. So yeah, it's so gigahertz, just faster, but faster. then breakdowns of the channel, the width within that spectrum. Yeah, so the lower the number, the more spread out that signal is. Okay. And that the data transfer is not going to be as fast, but it's able to penetrate items or go a little bit further. Whereas if you've got a really fast signal up to that 100 megahertz or 80, whatever you may select, your distance in theory is going to get shorter, but it's going to get faster. So kind of think of it in that regard. So it's about just kind of finding that, you know, pressing the dial and going, well, I can get better here or here and finding that where that middle ground is. Right. So I'm sorry for misspeaking and saying 20 hertz versus four megahertz. I got thrown off too, so it's all good. No, no it's, it's okay. Like, like I said, sometimes <laughs> it's difficult even for me to visualize.